Crimson Trace offers a free batteries for life program that includes nearly all laser sights, electronic sights, and rifle scopes. Just register your product for a free set of batteries each year at crimsontrace.com. Hey y'all, it's Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Look out, we smoking. All right, glad you are here. I'm Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. We're going to be talking about guns. Well, well I talk about guns all the time. I just, <laughs> it's what I do. Uh, read about them, talk about them, study them, shoot them, do whatever I can. Like guns. And I like the subject matter of gun control, gun activism, gun rights, history of the United States and of other countries. And the more you dig into it, the more you realize, wow, so much of what I'm being told by the general media, doesn't add up. It's not making sense. And then you dig a little further, you realize, oh, it's actually not even true. Well, that's weird because it's that old deal of what? Well, and I always ask the question, how would you know if what you absolutely know to be true is in fact not true? The only way to know that is to subject it to a challenge, is to go dig, dig, dig and find out, okay, I'm being told that there's an epidemic of gun violence in America. And then you go, you know, well, everybody knows that, right? I mean, everybody knows there's an epidemic of gun violence because I hear it everywhere. And then you go look at the FBI data and you go, wait a minute. Murders are down by half and gun crime is down by 70%. How is that epidemic? How is that an epidemic? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but you've been lied to. And it is difficult to challenge that. It really is. But there are, fortunately, some people who will do exactly that. Our next guest, Dr. Miguel Faria, is one of those. He was the editor of the Journal of Medical Association of Georgia, grew up or lived under communist rule in Cuba. Miguel, thank you so much for joining us. I, I, we have so little time and so much to cover, and you have this wonderful, great new book, America, Guns, and Freedom, A Journey into Politics and the Public Health and Gun Control Movements. Why did you decide you had to write this book? Well, first of all, let me thank you for inviting me to your excellent show. Uh, I wrote this book because in 1990, I was uh, in the Medical Association of Georgia, Mm -hmm. And I was uh, a delegate, and subsequently I was an editor of the journal. And at that time, the AMA had a big campaign for against domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was a PR uh, campaign. And in addition to that, they just sneaked in and, and began a gun violence campaign. Mm -hmm. And I found that only the articles that were for gun control were to be published. And we were inundated with all these articles from the AMA uh, that were supposed to be uh, scientific articles from the public health uh, establishment, mm -hmm. and nothing as opposed to opposing these articles. And number one, I said, these articles, number one, are not scientific, and number two, uh, they are one-sided. Why don't we publish both sides of the debate? Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> I raised a storm uh, because I refused to comply with this. That went on for about three years. And uh, I learned a lot, and I began to collect data. And I, uh, from there about public health and gun control and the medical establishment. And from there, I, it was an easy step to explore all the aspects of gun rights. And that is the uh, result uh, is my book. Let me ask you, Miguel, when you challenged it and you said, well, all we're getting is this one-sided stuff in favor of gun control, and actually the studies they have are very shaky on a scientific front, and we need to publish both sides, what was the pushback? What were you told? I was, they were embarrassed. And all it took was a series of articles or editorials from the Atlanta Journal of Constitution, which is our biggest newspaper in Georgia, and the, the medical association was embarrassed, and they didn't want to, to have this. They wanted to, we have to go along with the AMA and the public health establishment, uh, or, uh, or else 
Well, as you can imagine, I, had, I was forced to resign, uh, uh-huh. which I did. And lo and behold, uh, a couple of years, actually, this was in 1993. Uh, I went from 1993 to 1995, and then the year after that, uh, I began another journal. So I continued this, this battle against the medical establishment uh, with the medical sentinel. And then, lo and behold, in uh, 2002, President George Bush uh, appointed me or, or asked me to uh, please join this committee uh, at, at the CDC, right in the belly of the beast, to supervise some of the grants that were being uh, awarded for gun well, now, violence. This, this was right at the time when their head of research says that the goal is to make guns like cigarettes dirty and banned. Well, actually, I think I, I jumped a step there. Uh, before that, in 1996, I was asked to testify in Congress. Uh-huh. And I did so with uh, Dr. Timothy Wheeler, who founded the Doctor for Responsible Gun Ownership. Right. And, and Don Adobe. Cates. Uh-huh. Don Cates testified yes, at the same time. Don Cates and another doctor from Atlanta. And we basically testified the truth, that this, the, the research that was coming out of the CDC and other uh, schools of public health were not scientific. In fact, I, I call them junk science because they were politicized, biased, and result-oriented, which meant that the conclusions were preordained to conclude two things. One, that guns were bad, and gun ownership in the general population resulted in death. And number two, asking for more money for more research. (laughs) And we testified that in in the... what needed to be done was the opposite. We needed to defund all of this research, and Congress very wisely went along and did the right thing. They defunded uh, propaganda, the gun control propaganda that was being promulgated by the CDC and public health. I mean, what what uh, they, they did, and I want to point out, this is the Dickey Amendment, and what they said was, look, you can have funding for legitimate research, but anything that is... Basically, outcome-oriented, it is where you got a preconceived notion if the goal of the quote-unquote research is to push gun control, then no, we're not going to provide federal funding for that, right? Exactly. And what the media began saying is that the, C- the CDC had been prohibited from conducting scientific research on gun violence, which was not the truth. It was the preordained uh, pseudoscience that was banned. With good reason. All right. So what's and, going on here? I mean, you're a, you're a medical doctor. You've been in this world. Uh, you've got this thing that, that's called organized medicine, which I don't quite understand what that is. But where does this push for gun control in the medical community come from? Well, to, uh, well, the medical establishment, what is called organized medicine, is the AMA, basically. Uh, well, the AMA has lost, and 50 years ago, the, the AMA... Have com- was comprised of 75% of doctors. Today, it's comprised by 15%. 15%. And most of those doctors are not in private practice, not in research. Uh, they are really doctors that are appointed that, that work for the government and in public health. Uh-huh. In other words, if you, the chances are that your doctor, your personal physician, your family doctor is not a member of the AMA. No, so they've lost membership. Mm-hmm. But, my God, we can talk about this forever. But they have a monopoly. They have a monopoly of books that doctors have to buy every year to be able to practice medicine. Ooh. And if you're, that's called the CPT codes. In other words, when you build something, you have to have a number of the procedures you perform. Right, right, right. And right. to get those numbers, you have to buy those books from the AMA. Can you wow. imagine what a racket? Yeah, that, that is a racket. Tell you what, I need you to hold on just a second. I've got to take a quick break here. Uh, we're okay. talking with uh, Michael Miguel Faria, and uh, he is a medical doctor. He's written this incredible book, insightful. It exposes the hoax 
of the gun control movement within the medical community. The title of it is America, Guns, and Freedom, A Journey into Politics and the Public Health and Gun Control Movements. Our number, 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back. Marry a hot semi-automatic rifle with a state-of-the-art optic, and you get a double handful of awesome. The Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport II Optic Ready Rifle in 5.56 NATO comes with a Picatinny rail gas block topped with the Crimson Trace CTS 103 Optic. You get both red and green dot reticles, the rifle you want, the optic you crave, at a price you can afford. Visit smith-wesson.com. But they'll never take our freedom! Hi, this is Ryan Gresham with Gun Talk. Have you ever heard about a gun giveaway but thought, I live in a state where I just can't win that stuff? California. Well, visit guntalk.com slash win to enter the Legal Everywhere giveaway presented by Timney Triggers. One grand prize winner receives more than $7,300 in prizes, including two handguns, triggers, holster packages, tactical gear, optics, and more. The best part? Residents of all 50 states can enter. Prizes from Axion Optics, Colt, Crossbreed Holsters, DeSantis, Proper, Timney Triggers, and Walther. Enter now through November 1st at guntalk.com slash win. That's guntalk.com slash win. Trouble is unpredictable. It shows up without warning. It rears its ugly head when and where you least expect it. Trouble has no conscience, no regrets, no remorse. Be prepared and protected with the MC1 SC subcompact 9mm pistol by Mossberg. Yes, Mossberg, the company trusted by police and military for decades. The MC1 SC subcompact 9mm pistol. Small, powerful, snag free. Always with you. Available with night sights or laser. Mossberg.com. I have to say, I'm reading the introduction to America, Guns, and Freedom, a journey into politics uh, and the public health and gun control movements. There's a, a piece in here right in the introduction. It says, uh, as Johann Wolfgang von Goth, 1749 to 1832 said, truth has to be repeated constantly because error also is being preached all the time and not just by a few, but by the multitude. In the press, encyclopedias, and schools, and universities, everywhere, error holds sway. Feeling happy and comfortable in the knowledge of having majority on its side. Or, as I have said so often, and has become the motto of our true squad, a lie left unchallenged becomes the truth. We're joined by Miguel Faria, Dr. Miguel Faria, Jr. Uh, he's the author of America, Guns, and Freedom. Miguel, you grew up in, did you grow up in Cuba? Yes, I did. I, uh, I, I had a, a family that, uh, well, my parents were in the revolution, and they were in the underground fighting against Fulgencio Batista mm -hmm. uh, in the revolutionary directory, which was a freedom movement, which, of course, was sidestepped by Fidel Castro, 26th of July movement that resulted in communism. So... We were on the other side of the guerrilla group, basically, uh, and we felt betrayed by the revolution. And the reason Fidel Castro basically was able to take over was because he was assisted by the American media that portrayed him as the George Washington of the Caribbean, uh -huh. if you can imagine this. All right, so, let me ask you, grow, growing up in, you know, and, and living under a communist rule and coming to America, how does that color your view of the importance of gun rights in the U.S.? Well, put it this way, one of the, Batista allow citizens to have firearms, but they have to be registered. So as soon as Fidel Castro took over, one of the things he did uh, was to order his militia, who were his communist thugs, to go over the registries. 
and get the names of everybody who had firearms. And, of course, they, they, they went house to house and confiscated those firearms. That way, there would be no revolution against the communist regime that he had established. And I have, a, I have another book, uh, Cuban Revolution, in which I tell the story of what happened to my father when they came over to get his firearms. Uh, but in any case, it, what happened is that this, the communism and the USSR in this former Soviet Union has collapsed, and in Cuba we still have communism because the people were uh, disarmed. Uh, and, you know, up to this day, there is still tyranny in Cuba, and it's related to the fact that the people lost, lost their firearms. You know, and, and I know and there, there I are people in, look, there are people in America who say, well, you guys are just paranoid. And I always say, look, just look at places like Cuba, like other places. And, and yes, I understand. No one is trying to take over or enslave or have tyranny in the U.S. right now. But the way you prevent that, that from happening in 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 years from now is to make sure that they don't have registration lists because they can't actually do those things without a registration list of gun owners, right? Well, that, well, that makes it a lot easier. That makes it a lot easier. In other countries, basically, uh, they were, people were disarmed because the, the, the secret police found out who had the guns. They had informants. Uh, that betray their neighbors. Uh, mm -hmm. In Cuba, was the committees for the defense of the revolution, and the neighbors knew everything about their neighbors. So uh, that was another way that you can find where the firearms are. But with registration, of course, it's a lot easier. All right, let's uh, fast and, forward back. I want to run back to your your current book, the new book, America, Guns, and Freedom, and you're looking at the medical community in America and. You, you just plainly say that a lot of this stuff that's put out as medical research is not accurate or not trustworthy. Why do you say that? Because it's not based on science. It's based on propaganda. It's basically propaganda. The scientific method has a way to go about making discoveries. And that, those rules are not followed when it comes to guns and violence. Absolutely, they are not followed. For one thing, the public health officials say guns are like viruses that must be eradicated. Well, guns are not like viruses. Guns are inanimate objects, and they do not follow, for example, the steps that you follow in a scientific investigation. You have, in, in, the, in the case of, uh, of microbes, you have Cox postulates in which you follow four steps to see if something is scientific. Okay. The papers on gun violence do not follow that. They have preordained conclusions. In other words, they have already decided what they want to conclude before they actually done the study. And, and then and they whatever go, and then, they have and, to do. And the, yeah, exactly. Then they go get whatever they need to support that. Now, let me exactly. ask you this, because I'm not a scientist, but what I, the thing I look at when I see all these studies, I even hate to use, hate to use the word studies here, uh, propaganda is more like it from the CDC and from other places is that you never see the offsetting information of guns being used to save lives. How many times that happens? Uh, that has to. They have to know that if you were doing if you're doing a study on the uh, efficacy of a drug, you would say, okay. It has these side effects, but it will save this many lives. So in total, it's a good benefit. Why? Do we not see that in these gun studies? <laughs> because they just violate the rules, you know. They don't want to know about the beneficial aspects of gun ownership. I brought that up when I was editor. And, you know, it, no, they don't want to see that, that aspect of it. They only want to see the bad implications. Is there uh, anything... In other words, criminals, and not only that, but it's criminal uses a firearm... They want to extrapolate that to the law-abiding citizens, and therefore they want to disarm the law-abiding citizen because, number one, it's a, it, was a, it began as a, pub, as a public relation campaign. Eventually it became ideological, and eventually after that it became a vested interest. They wanted more and more money for research, 
which means more money for them to do research, which is, serves also had their ideological bias. So, I mean, it's another racket. That's the second part of the racket. It, uh, you it, know. It, it absolutely is. It's a fascinating book. I mean, I can't imagine how much time you put into this. And I, for anybody who's really seriously into the whole gun rights movement, or if you are in the medical community, you really need to get a copy of this, America, Guns, and Freedom. It's by uh, Dr. Miguel Faria, Jr. Uh, Miguel, just real quickly, just for those of us who are not medical professionals, or maybe those who are, is there anything we can do to combat uh, all of this bad information that's out there from the medical community? The main thing we need to do is try to get our congressman and our senator to stop funding this type of research. We need to close the spigot of money going to public health when it comes to gun violence research, which is not research, it's gun control propaganda. So that is the most important way. The second part, I wish we could end that monopoly that the AMA has on the CPT codes so that they must rely on membership so that the members can start telling the AMA what they should be doing instead of uh, having a public-private partnership. So they're getting, the their, they're getting their money by being the sole source of its information. Exactly, exactly. That makes perfect sense. Again, thank you so much for doing this. There's so much more in this book, and it's really well done, and it's incredibly well documented. Uh, everything from uh, shooting rampages, mental health, the sensationalism of violence, uh, gun control, the, uh, you know, about how it's been used by uh, tyrants throughout history, Really good stuff. Thank you again, Miguel. I appreciate that. Uh, I highly recommend the book. Thank you, sir. All right. In just a few minutes, we're going to be joined by uh, Cam Edwards. You know Cam from uh, Cam and Company, uh, formerly at the NRA, no longer there, but keep doing his thing. And uh, tons of information uh, we need to share with you. For one thing, the FBI just came out with their new report on crime. You know, and this whole epidemic of gun violence and everybody's screaming about guns. Once again, we find out that more people are actually killed with fists and feet. It was with rifles of all types, much less semi-autos. Many more people killed with knives. Crazy stuff out there. Where's the media on this? Well, we'll talk about that when we come back. 866-TALK-GUN. Tom Gresham here. Be right back with more Gun Talk. A girl can't go wrong with something in basic black. Like... An AR-15. Some things never go out of style, like Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Hey, when do you want to spot that burglar? When he's casing your home or after he's in? Ask John, whose blink camera alerted him of burglars trying to break in while he and his family were home. Or Shannon, whose blink camera caught a thief stealing packages. Both times, Blink video clips were sent to police to help convict the crooks. Blink motion-activated indoor and outdoor cameras are wire-free, set up in minutes, and run on two lithium batteries that last up to two years. And when you're away, Blink's live feed option lets you monitor your home and check in on kids and pets from anywhere using your Blink smartphone app. No contracts, totally affordable. In fact, Blink systems start at just $79.99. Thanks to Blink, home security just got easier. Visit BlinkProtect.com slash gun talk. That's BlinkProtect.com slash gun talk. Also available on Amazon and at other fine retailers. Blink is an Amazon company and it works with Alexa. It's a pleasure now to bring in a, a friend. He's a, a true radio professional, been at it a long time. And if you are trying to keep up with him, now we're going to tell you where you can find him. Cam Edwards joins us right now. Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm good, Tom. How are you, sir? It looks great. Now, it's been, what, a couple of months now since you were doing the, the gig at the NRA, right? Yeah. Uh, early July is when uh, NRA TV ceased to exist. Okay. Now, it looks to me, looking at the pictures, that you spent all of your time since then working on that massive beard of yours. <laughs> <laughs> You know that that was part of my summer plan, absolutely. Um, so, <laughs> it, you know, so so the reason why I have this is not just to make up for the fact that I have no hair on top of my head. Um, yeah, as you know, three years ago, my wife was diagnosed with cancer, and when she lost her hair to chemo, I'm already bald. So shaving my head was, you know, kind of 
Yeah, what are you going to do? It, 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 exactly. So she said, grow out the beard for me. And I really? said, okay. So, yep. So this is the chemo support beard. Uh, and uh, probably eight or nine months ago, she said, quit trimming it. Just grow it out for me. I said, all right. So uh, I've been growing it out for her. And you know what? I, I don't know if this is like Samson and Delilah, but uh, – she seems to be getting some strength from the beard, so I'm just going to keep growing it out. That's as long terrific. As I, can. I, I keep expecting to see like a nest of birds in there or something, man. Uh, you know, if you if you look closely, <laughs> you might find a little raccoon peeking out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. First of all, tell people what you're doing these days. So I am now the editor at BarryAndArms.com, uh, which is part of Town Hall Media, and we are doing a daily Barry and Arms Cam and Company. You can find it on YouTube as well as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher at uh, townhall.com podcast as well. Uh, it is not the, you know, old school three-hour cam and company, but uh, we are working on making it bigger and better by the day. But uh, right now, Monday through Friday, it's a, you know, 20 to 30-minute look at the uh, mm -hmm. top Second Amendment headlines, uh, an interview with uh, a newsmaker or somebody in the world of the Second Amendment. And uh, so you're still getting And, of course, we still have our armed citizen story every day. We still have our, our, uh, our deal of the day, that, you know, story from the criminal justice system where the, the laws aren't being enforced against armed robbery or carjacking, but they want to put more gun control laws on the books, same to you and I. So uh, we're still getting all of that in each and every weekday. And, of course, Bearing Arms, if people want to check it out, BearingArms.com. You also have uh, the newsletter. You get the email alerts. You get stories. And, you know, people at the core level, one of the things I keep telling people, Cam, is that if you are going to be involved in the gun rights movement, and I hope that every gun owner wants to be, your first course of action is to be informed. You have to know what's going on, and you have to marshal your information, and you have to be able to put it together in a package where you can deliver it in a short nugget of per being persuasive. But at its heart, you have to have intellectual ammunition, and that's what you're providing. Uh, well, that's what we're trying to do each and every day, absolutely. Uh, and, and you're right. And, and, you know, first of all, if you're not informed, you don't know where to fight. Right, because you don't know yeah. where those fights are taking place. So tomorrow, for instance, uh, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is set to unveil a package of proposals, most of which, by the way, are going to be completely unobjectionable to gun owners. Right, They're going to deal with things like uh, increasing the penalties for using the gun in the commission of a crime, uh, increasing penalties for being a felon in possession of a firearm. There's going to be some stuff dealing with mental illness. But we're also going to see a version of a quote-unquote red flag bill, uh, and we're going to see Governor DeWine's proposal about expanding uh, background check requirements. And mm -hmm. so, you know, these are, are issues that, uh, I, frankly, I, I don't know how successful the governor is going to be in Ohio. Uh, even members of his own party in the legislature seem to be rather cool to his proposals, and they've actually, you know, uh, already offered up substitute legislation of their own. But if you're a gun owner in Ohio and you don't know any of this stuff, how, how effective can you be uh, in protecting and defending your rights? You, you can't show up or speak up or stand up about it if you don't know about it in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And we also need to understand as gun owners, look, there is, you know, a lot going on at the national level. But, but gun control groups are very smart and they're very savvy right now. They recognize that they are in the best position that they've been in for decades in terms mm -hmm. of advancing their agenda. And they're not putting all of their eggs in the federal congressional basket, right? They, they are working at the local level, they're working at the state level. Uh, and so no matter where you live, you do need to be paying attention. You, you could live in the reddest of red states. You could think, ah, oh, there's no way we're going to have gun control happening. You'd be surprised if you might be attending your local PTA meeting these days. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I, right? I, live in a, I live in a red state, and I know how active the Bloomberg groups are working on the legislators all the time, and they're sneaking in these little bills. And if you're not paying attention to it, that kind of stuff slips through. Absolutely. And every little victory for them is a uh, not just another gun control law in the books, but it's a public relations victory. Uh, it serves their narrative that, uh, that these are just, quote, unquote, common sense gun safety proposals that they're calling for. Right. And so, you know, it's not all Beto O'Rourke saying, yeah, we're coming for your guns. There's a there's a lot happening that you do actually have to go out and look for because the, the media is simply not reporting on it. Exactly. Hold on a second, Cam. We're talking with Cam Edwards. If you'd like to uh, chat, if you want to just tell Cam, hey, I'm a fan. I've been following you a long time. Give me a holler, 866-TALK-GUN. When we come back, there's some news from the FBI not getting a lot of coverage on the national front. Well, that would be because it actually contradicts what much of the mainstream media is telling you about the epidemic of gun violence. We'll be asking Cam about that. Again, 866-TALK-GUN.
Brownells.com is your home for all things firearms. Looking for a retro rifle? How about the BRN 180 or 180S? Named one of SHOT Show's best products of 2019. Visit Brownells.com for guns, ammo, reloading equipment, or anything you need to customize your firearm. And enjoy the industry's only guaranteed forever satisfaction policy. To stay up to date with the latest and best deals from Brownells, text BRN to 556-223. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, with the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. For 25 years, Crimson Trace has led the industry in laser and light technology and customer service. Now, Crimson Trace is proud to offer electronic sights and rifle scopes for tactical, target, and hunting applications with the same Crimson Trace offer of free batteries for life on all products. The new rifle scope line is also backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty from the brand that you have trusted for over two decades. Find out more at CrimsonTrace.com. Cam Edwards from Cam and Company and the editor of Bearing Arms. Check it out, bearingarms.com. Cam, uh, the news from the FBI, once again, kind of uh, contradicting what the mainstream media is telling us. And you have these weird things going on. I remember, you know, of course, you know John Lott only too well, his book, More Guns, Less Crime. That's kind of what we have these days, isn't it? It really is, and it's not anything new, uh, honestly, uh, Tom. You know, violent crime reached its peak in the early 1990s in the United States. It's been dropping pretty steadily since then. We've had a couple of years where, uh, you know, crime has gone up a bit, but then it, uh, it drops back down. The FBI released the uniform crime stats for 2018 uh, earlier this week, and what they reported was that violent crime was down by 3.9 percent, homicide down by more than 6 percent across the country, and you know as well as I do, uh, gun sales continue to be very strong, right? The number of NICS checks performed every month is about 2 million. That's not a perfect analog for the number of guns sold. But uh, what we are seeing and what we have seen really for a generation now is not a, a growing epidemic of, quote, unquote, gun violence, but we've actually seen more guns and less crime. You know, if you take out the anomaly of 2016, which was the Hillary Clinton push where people went out and bought guns like crazy, uh, Nick's checks for last month were the highest they've ever been. More guns being sold now than ever before. So we have all these guns going out there. And, oh, yeah, by the way, 1.4 million more people last year with concealed carry permits, putting aside the whole thing of states where you don't have to have mm-hmm. a permit at all. So you got millions and millions of people carrying loaded guns everywhere. Oh, yeah. And murders are down and crime is down and gun crime is down and violence is down. How, how do you, how do we deal with this massive propaganda misinformation effort? 
you know, it's tough. Uh, and I think we do it through programs like yours, through websites like mine, through conversations that we have each and every day where we can, you know, put in these little data points. Because, you know, you're right, Tom. Not only did we see what is now 18.66 million Americans, I think, according to the Crime mm-hmm. Prevention Research Center that have their concealed carry licenses, we can look at states that have adopted those gun control proposals that – uh, the other side is calling for places like Colorado, where violent crimes actually increased by about 25 percent since they put, quote unquote, universal background check laws on the books. They're bucking the trend. Violent crime nationwide is going down in Colorado, where in 2013 they put universal background checks. They put a magazine ban on the books. Violent crime is going up. It's doing the exact opposite of what gun control advocates are saying. Now, you're right. The media is not going to help us tell this story. Uh, as compelling as it might be. They've got, uh, I think, a narrative and an agenda uh, that they want to, uh, you know, put in place here. So we do have to be creative. We have to be inventive. And we have to be the ones to tell the story uh, because we simply can't expect others to do it for us. So, you know, if you hear something on Gun Talk, uh, uh, you know, share it with your coworkers. If you see something that you can put on your social media, spread the word. Everybody is their own publishing company these days. It's a great and, point. I mean, I, I go pick up stories off of Bearing Arms, and I link to them on my Twitter account because I, I want people to see, you know, look, here's the data. Here's the actual information. I know you're not hearing it from CNN. You're not even hearing it from Fox for the most part. So you got to go. You have to go find it yourself. It's not going to be carried to you and dropped in your lap. That's right. Um, and, but the, the good news is, I think, is that Americans – some anyway, not everyone, but uh, but some really are craving that information. They know that they're not getting the whole story. Uh, there's a reason why polling, for example, on things like universal background checks, you know, when, when, when that's asked by a, a pollster, 90 percent approval. But when voters actually have the opportunity to cast a vote, you know, it's rejected by 52 percent of the voters in Maine. It's passed by... 50.1% of the voters in Nevada. It's a much closer thing because that's when voters and, and Americans start to you know, really delve into some of these details because they're actually presented with that information for the first time. I, we need funny, to make sure that it's not just happening around elections. Funny you mentioned, I just heard from somebody who got one of these polls on uh, universal background checks. It was a phone deal. He said it was mm-hmm. interesting. And it, it, they said, okay, well, you know, would you favor the universal background checks? And he said, no. So they said, well, if this was done to it, would you feel more favorable to it? And he said, I could tell what they were doing was, and he went, he kept saying no. And they kept trying to find another way so that they could get a yes from him in some form or fashion. And then that yes becomes a gun owner's favor universal background checks. Yeah. Again, you know, they're, they're, they're very savvy right now with what they're doing. Uh, and part of, uh, you know, what they're, they're very aware of is that public opinion does matter. It matters not only to the media, it really matters to politicians. Uh, they pay attention to these polls. Sometimes yes. politicians pay more attention to these polls than, than what they're actually hearing from their constituents, which I think is completely backwards. Um, but, you know, again, if, if we're more savvy as well, and it sounds like you're, uh, your listener there really was savvy about yeah. what was going on, right? Yeah. If, if, if we get smart as well, um, then I think that we can start to level the playing field. Look, we're never going to be able to compete with Michael Bloomberg's money, right? right. He can outspend us every day of the week. Uh, but we do have, I, I think, millions of Americans who are grassroots advocates. We have millions more who aren't even gun owners, but who do care about the constitutional right to keep and bear arms. And they're also, I think they're more concerned about public safety, if we can tell them, look, here's why the gun control policies that you might support don't work, and here's a better idea, they're going to come on board with that. Absolutely true. A great way to put it. Cam, thank you so much. Again, tell people how they can find what you're doing these days. Sure. And thank you so much, Tom. This has been a real, real pleasure. I always uh, love listening to the program. It's really cool to actually be on it. Um, so bearingarms.com is where you can uh, uh, find these stories. We're also posting a link to Bearing Arms Cam and Company each and every day. But you can go to Town Hall Media on YouTube and you can find the Bearing Arms Cam and Company on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher and townhall.com podcast. Perfect. I love working with a pro. Cam Edwards, thank you so much. We will see you next time. And best to you and your wife. We are sending prayers your way, as you know only too well. 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back.
Oh man, I am so jazzed. I am so ready to go hunting. Uh, for me, part of the fun of going hunting is getting ready. I mean, get all the gear ready and it's like, okay, you go out and you hunt for a few days, but the preparation extends the season, if you will, for weeks or months, depending on how long you want to get ready for it. Uh, I took uh, four rifles out to the range, got them all ready. Uh, the 6.5 PRC, not Creedmoor, PRC, the 257 Roberts, the 257 Weatherby, and my lever action Marlin that I bought, the little short barrel, 16 inch barrel, 4570. Not going to take that out from mule deer, but I just wanted to go check it out. It, interestingly enough, it was shooting about three inches low at 25 yards using iron sights, but I was using the uh, Honey Badger ammo from Black Hills. And it's a lighter bullet, so it's going to recoil a little less, which makes it shoot lower, faster bullet. People say, well, a faster bullet's going to go higher. No, actually, it's out the barrel. The barrel doesn't recoil as much. It's not coming up, so it actually goes out the barrel before the recoil raises the barrel. And if you sometimes are using faster loads in your handgun, you'll find that they shoot lower. Not a problem. Just adjust the sights and go. But I did get the uh, Ruger number ones out to the range, and you know those those rifles kind of have a reputation for not being all that accurate, and that reputation still hangs on many, many, many years after it was no longer true. That was probably true 30, 40 years ago. Frankly, the Ruger barrels back then weren't nearly as good as they are today. Uh, what I got out of all three of them was uh, the groups at 100 yards were in the 0.6 to 0.75. So all of them under three quarters of an inch at 100 yards. So what I'm going to be doing is going mule deer hunting. I'm going to take the 257 Weatherby and the 257 Roberts with me because I am a firm believer in having a backup rifle. If something goes wrong with a rifle in the middle of a hunt, particularly in this case, because we're not going to be where we can just drive back in. We're going to be in a wilderness area. Uh, so I'll have two different rifles. Now, they definitely shoot to different places and they have different trajectories. So I'll print out my trajectory tables I am not going to dial up. I've just got them sighted in to where, okay, out with the Roberts out to 300 and 325 yards, just hold on. I'm shooting 110 grain Nosler Acubons in that, 3,000 feet per second. In the Weatherby, I'm using the 80 grain Barnes TTSX, um, and that is 4,000 feet per second, and I can hold on to about 425 with that. Uh, using laser range finder, I just basically zap it, and I know I can hold on. With the Roberts, however, I'll use the, my plan is to use the Weatherby as the primary. Um, with the Weatherby, it's just hold on. With the Roberts, if I end up having to use that one, if I need to shoot out at 400 yards, and I would take a shot like that if it were if I had a steady rest, it felt good, and that's when you need to know your trajectory. And you need to know what the drop is, and you absolutely have to know what the range is. And that's where the ra laser rangefinder has just changed the game completely. It used to be you just kind of look out there and guess, ah, it's 300, whatever. Now you go, zap, okay, it is 411 yards, and you have your chart. In my case, and I know people go, wait, that's, that's crazy not to do your dial-ups. Yeah, I know. And I'll probably get there eventually. I'm just slow to get there, but that's not what I'm going to do. And if it's a 12-inch drop, I'll just hold on the back line. Actually, one inch into the back line. You know the rule, right? Gresham's rule for hunting. First shot, always aim it here. Seems like every time I hold over a critter, I end up shooting over the critter. So always aim at hair is the basic rule. Hey, uh, when we come back, I want to talk about, you'll, you'll be amazed. The media actually spiked a story, a positive story about gun owners. Surprise, surprise, right? Well, sure surprised these folks. 866-TALK-GUN.